My dad, Pastor Alan Shook, as he comes on up. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on. Come on, stand up. Come on. All right, so uh, this is my dad, and uh, he deserves your applause because he had to raise me. And uh, y'all can have a seat. Um, also, uh, not only me, but my two older brothers and my three younger sisters. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And so uh, he's going to bring a word today, and I just encourage you to be open, receive it, mm-hmm. shout, call, or say some amens when it's appropriate, amen. which will be a lot. So, uh, right. so uh, Dad, bring it. <laughs> and all of them turned out okay. So we're all right with that one. Amen. amen. Of course, I think Mom had something to do with it yeah. a few times there, and she kept them in order, but that was good. All right. Yeah, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we step before you today, and we look into your word, and have it revealed into our hearts the things you've spoken to us and we invite the Holy Spirit, the teacher of the church to speak to us and bring revelation knowledge, insights and things we haven't seen before brought to light within our hearts and spirits that we might know you and walk closer to you. We thank you for your presence here today. I thank you for you doing your work among your people and the things that are needed in each and every life. I thank you that you'll manifest yourself to them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, I'm going to begin in uh, starting here with life. It's one of my favorite subjects. It's what happened to me when I made Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. Uh, the Bible talks about some, in, in uh, the circle of Christianity, we, we talk about things and we have terms that the natural world or the people you work with, <laughs> they, don't, they don't use terms like, you know, I was born again or sanctification, redemption. These are a lot of Bible terms. Uh, I got saved. Uh, we, use, we use words like that in our Christian culture that sometimes the world doesn't understand. And uh, as you hang around church for a while, you'll learn some of those things and understand what they mean and how they affect you. But I made Jesus Lord and Savior in my life, uh, February 1972. I was basically uh, on the road hitchhiking some of you remember the 60s and 70s, but you know, <laughs> and I was going from about Detroit to Chicago and about halfway through the process, I met God out there on the road. I really had a road to Damascus experience and uh, what we're going to talk about today happened to me and my life was going one direction and when God changed my life, and we use those Bible terms, saved, born again, uh, is another term that's come down and comes out. But it did. It it changed my whole nature. Something happened deep inside me of who I was, my character, my nature. It completely changed, and I was no longer the same person. The person himself changed. And I experienced what we'll look at is called the gift of eternal life. See, it's a gift. If I was to hand you something, then you would receive it. And you would know it, that you got it. Well, once you make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life, you'll know you get it. Or, uh, you know, some people say, oh, they just got religion. Well, I got something more than that. And uh, and so let's take a look at um, 1 Timothy. I'm going to start there. I'm an old Bible person. I like to look actually in a written book. And uh, so I'll be turning to a lot of scriptures today. And 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, I think they're going to get it up. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Now fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Now that fight means there's a lot of distractions out there and there are going to be choices that you're going to have to make every day, almost every hour, every minute of the day, you have to make a choice on which way you're going to live. And all those distractions that come your way, all those things that try to bump you off track with God's will and purpose for your life, you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. And a good fight of faith, you know, someone, came to, someone said one time, you know what a good fight is? It's the one you win. I mean, when you go into a fight and come out winning, that's a good fight. It's a bad fight if you lose. So you fight the good fight of faith, come out winning. 
Why? Because whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is the victory, our faith. And you lay hold on eternal life and don't you let go of it. You lay hold on it, you cling to it, you grab onto it, and you begin to possess. You say, I'm not losing what God has blessed me with and the life he's given me. I'm not letting go of it. I'm going to lay hold on eternal life, and I'm going to fight a good fight of faith and keep it. Amen? Amen? All right. Now, Jesus said over in John chapter 10, verse 10, and this is how we taught our children some of our memory verses when they were growing up. You have 10 fingers and 10 toes. So it's real simple, John 10, 10. And it's a good memory verse. And it's a axis for you in your life and understanding where things are set. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a point of reference that will always bring to your consciousness where you stand with good and evil. John chapter 10, 10, Satan cometh, or the thief, he comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now that sounds like just having a good life, doesn't it? But see, the access here is from now on, you'll always know if it comes to steal, to kill, or to destroy, it's from Satan, the thief, the, the destroyer. Anything else, if, it, it's, if it's in your life, and it's killing, stealing, or destroying any aspect of your life, relationships, financially, uh, socially, mentally, if it's tormenting you mentally, uh, with stress and all kinds of thoughts that pressure against you. If it comes to steal, kill, or destroy, it's the thief. But if it comes to give life and give life abundantly, it's from the Lord. I come, Jesus, I come to give life and life more abundantly. Now, when we read over there in uh, Timothy, where he said, lay hold on eternal life, we're getting back into some of that church bible stuff. And they'll throw Greek words at you, so we're going to use the word zoe. Maybe somebody's even heard that before, zoe. And uh, it's called the zoe life of God. The reason is we don't have in our English language certain words of description that we can describe what it means, the zoe life of God. And so the scripture is written in Greek, and we tried to translate it. And when we did, we couldn't quite grab a hold of the full context of what that is. And we just said, lay hold on life, because it's life. But we can't get a hold of what life is, because it's Zoe life. And I come that you might have life, Zoe life, and more abundant, greater than you've ever experienced before. And so getting a hold of that concept of the word Zoe that it was translated over, it actually means the life of God. The, the, the substance that makes God, God. The, well, what's inside you that makes you alive? I mean, I, 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 there's something inside you that makes you you that makes you alive. But you can't grab a hold of it or touch it. It's like it's not tangible. Well, that's that same substance, that force. Force? Well, I'm not in Star Wars, but anyway. It, it, it's, 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 that, it's, that, it's that stuff inside God that makes him alive. He's life. Amen. And everything about him is life. And everything is life. And, and you, you take the life out and you get God out and the life is gone. All you have left is death. You don't, you don't want to do that. Everything in this planet would just, everything in here is alive. Everything has life in it. He says, I'm upholding all things by the word of my power. The word of my power, the word of his life, the word, his, his power is life. He's upholding all things. You take the life out and, and I mean, everything starts to die. Well, what would happen if I took the life out of the oxygen, the air? Nobody lasts very long. 
to, to, I mean, everything on this planet is functioning because of his life. See, things in the spirit are the parent to things in the natural. Everything in the natural realm was made by and created by the realm of the spirit. It's the parent. And so spiritual laws govern natural laws. And that's why he says you can operate in a spiritual life greater than the life you have here and have it more abundantly. Because this life is an amazing life. And what's going to happen is, is when you make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life, eternal life was imparted into you. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who would ever believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Something's going to be, you're going to get a gift when you get born again, and you're going to be transformed and changed totally different than you are today. So fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on that eternal life. Don't let go of it. This is not something that you're going to obtain when you get to heaven. Well, you know, when we get to heaven, we'll get eternal life. No, you got eternal life right now down here. This isn't something you get when you get there. It's something you have here. Uh, one fellow mentioned <laughs> this preacher was in an elevator and uh, in a big conference. And he's, this Bible student came in and he just got out of the cemetery. I mean, seminary. <laughs> and, and, I wanted to, and I wanted to ask the guy a question. And he goes, C can I ask you a question, sir? And, you know, he gets in his old... I don't know, religious voice and whatever. Do you really think that the born-again Christian life is experiential? He goes, experiential? You mean, do I experience it? Yeah, because if I don't experience it here, I'm not going there. And I'm not going to get it when I get there because I have to experience here. And so, yeah, it's experiential. You know, I experience this thing. It's alive and living and real right here. Praise God. You can take a hardened criminal and unlock him up do, or, or he's still running the streets. It doesn't matter. But the moment he bumps into Jesus and he gives his life to Jesus, don't you know there's a transformation takes place? He is no longer the same man. He, he's been crucified with Christ. And all of a sudden, he's gone, and he's a brand new person. Eternal life had come into him. His sins had been forgiven. He's a new man. He's a new creature in Christ Jesus. Second, Colossians, or Second Corinthians 5.17. If any man be in Christ, makes Jesus Lord and Savior. What's that mean, making Jesus Lord and Savior? Well, it's more than just a thought or going to church or doing something nice. It's really Lord means I'm going to make him my master. So therefore, Lord, uh, listen, I'm not doing too good with my life and I'm going to need some help here. I mean, on the outside, I look pretty good. I'm a nice guy. I, you know, everything's okay. Norm in the natural realm, everything would be stable and okay. And so, but good people don't go to heaven. Born again people go to heaven. People that receive eternal life go to heaven. Amen? Yeah, right. So I'm basically, what I'm saying is, you know, Lord, uh, I'm making a decision to start doing things your way. And I'm going to ask you to help me. No longer my selfish way. But I'm going to start doing things the right way. Because see, the right way is not always the hard way. It might be hard, but I mean, it's the right way. But I'm making a choice to allow you to guide me, you to direct me. I can follow you in all that I do. And uh, I'm making you Lord of my life. You, you help me through this. Though that's when these things begin to change and happen and function in your life. When that takes place, the new nature of God enters into a man. Not does he just experience eternal life, but the change that takes place is the nature of God comes into him. First Peter chapter one, and I'm actually going to read a couple scriptures 
before that, verse 1, Simon Peter, his servant, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. Man, we got it, amen? I've obtained, praise the Lord. And he says, to the, that with, through us, the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus. And according as his divine power has given, this, isn't, this is not something I'm waiting for, has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Therefore, there are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. I got a whole book full of great and precious promises. They're exceeding. They've been given to us so that I might be a partaker of the divine nature. Uh, I'm a partaker of the divine nature of God when eternal life was put in me. And when eternal life came in, you know, death did leave from death to life. See, when you receive eternal life, death stepped out and you're no longer part of it. I'm now a partaker of God's divine nature and his nature flows in me. Romans tells me that the love of God, not mine, but God's love has been put in my heart by the Holy Ghost. I can love you even if I don't want to. <laughs> I got the love of God in me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I might be thinking one way and have to love you another way. And you won't know what my thought was, no. <laughs> but that's because I'm growing and maturing in Christ. I'm trying to grow through those things. But I'm always going to choose God's way. I'm always going to choose the word way. Always go God's way. Always go the word way. And I'm not going to choose another way. You mean you believe the Bible literally? Yeah, literally. I'm literate. I can read. Amen. And because I can read, it didn't change that. It's literal. Look, look over to, uh, I'm going to go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. <clears throat> I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Let me back up on a thought that the Lord just spoke to me about that. Remember the Garden of Eden? And he created Adam in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve and all, before Eve and Kelly created all that stuff. He took a man, formed him out of the dust of the earth, and it says, and he breathed the breath of life in him. Eternal life. Zoe life. He breathed life in him. Breathed life in him. And then he said, now over here in this garden, I got how many trees did he talk about? Two trees. One over here is the tree of what? The knowledge of good and evil. What was the other tree? The tree of life. Now, he could have said, now knowledge and evil, the, the tree of the good of knowledge and evil, will bring death. So here's a tree that will bring death, and here's a tree that's going to bring life. You choose. You choose. And Adam chose wrong. And when he did, the law of Genesis chapter 1 says, every seed will produce after its own kind. Remember I said there were spiritual laws that govern natural laws? The seed, the law of Genesis is every seed will produce after its own kind. So uh, by one man's offense, Romans 5, 17, by one man's offense, death came upon all mankind. So when Adam sin or transgression and partook of the tree of knowledge and evil, death, death came upon all men because now his seed passed to all mankind. 
But thank God there's a new man came. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And a new man came on, and his name, Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. And he partook, and now he gives life to whom he will. And all who call upon him shall receive this new life. I set before you, let's go back to that verse. Now, even today, right here where you're at, if, if there was a way to present it to you, just like God did in the garden with Adam, here's a tree, don't, don't eat of that one, but eat of the good one. I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, that you and your seed may live. And I suggest God gives us a good hint. He even wrote it down for us. <laughs> Choose life, because it's a whole lot better. And you are going to make choices every day, every moment, all the time in your life. You'll be making choices to choose life. Don't choose death, choose life. That's why I'm going the word way. I'm going the God way. I'm going his way, the life way. I'm not going to choose the death way. I'm going to choose God's way. It may not always be the easiest way, but it's the best way. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to go the word way. Now, Jesus said, well, I'm, thinking, I'm just thinking here, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but through me. I am the way. Choose that way. Choose his way. Choose his way on how you deal with your children. When you go to raise your children... And the things you have to bring to their attention as far as uh, discipline and correction or instruction in wisdom and learning and living, uh, choose his way. When it comes to your marriage and your spouse and uh, how you blend and live your life together, choose his way. Choose the way. I am the way. Don't you ever... I'm going to say it. Don't you ever let it ever come out your mouth. There is no way. Because there is a way. There are things that are impossible with men, but it's possible with God. Don't you ever come to a point in your conclusion in life, well, you know, there's just no way. Yeah, there is a way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This Zoe life. I, and lay hold on eternal life. Fight the good fight of faith. Oh. You're going to have to make a decision. If this word is real or not. And you're going to probably fight some tough battles in life. But you'll see some great victories. Amen. I've, I've been in places and been in different situations. Where me and God decided. I just won't give up. I'm not going any other different way. Your word works. I've seen the miracles of the Bible. I saw my little girl, 16 months old, about a, maybe an hour left to live, laying there. Nothing, the doctor said, what? No way? <laughs> no way. <laughs> I know the way. And first time back then, that I saw a lot of people say, you know, the pain is gone. I can't see your pain gone, but I'm, I rejoice with you. My headache's better. Oh, that stiffness in my back is gone. Oh, that heart problem I had is fixed. Well, I can't see your heart problem fixed, but I rejoice with you. But when a little girl is laying on a bed, that they said is gone, 
and it's taken its, have you ever uh, been around a lot of people in their last moments? And you wait. And you wait. And they go, wow, come on. And in the name of Jesus, I am not agreeing with this. And we ministered, and next thing I knew, instantly popped up, got awake, jumped off the bed, and ran off to play. <laughs> that's not a story that's written 2,000 years ago, but something that happens in my life. And a lot of those things happen daily in my life. I know the way. See, I was born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of the living God that lives and abides forever. And this living word will change you, transform you. See, the, the question was, is I could have sat here and told you all kinds of good news about Zoe life. And oh, it would have been nice. That's nice. Yes, yes, that's, that's nice. That's good. Yes, excuse me. Yes, that's wonderful. But how do I live it? How do I apply this to my daily life to where I experience it? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. And all things were created by the Word. And there wasn't anything made that wasn't made by the Word. And the word in him was life. And the life became the light of man. And man began to live. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, how do I get in there to where I can experience some of this stuff? Oh, if you abide in me and my word abide in you. Uh -huh. That life. See, uh, the word of God is quick and powerful. That word quick means made alive, that Zoe life. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword coming to where it can pierce and divide even the spirit and the soul of the and the heart and the marrow. It'll get in there and change things on the inside of you. Well, gee, that's good. Huh? How do I ever get there? Spend time in the word. Oh, you mean I got to do something? I thought I could just pray every time and ask God to help me. And isn't he just the big daddy in the sky to do it all? He already did it all. Now he's saying, you do something. He said, I've already defeated the enemy. I've already crushed him. I've already, I've already handled all these things before. I've already laid all of that over on Jesus when he died on the cross. Now, when you made him Lord and Savior, I said, now you go in my name and do these things. You go and be my representative. You allow this eternal life that's been placed on the inside of you to shine out and help and deliver and bless other people and lift them out of those scumbag things they're living in. And the power of God that's on the inside of you will drive death, sickness, and disease right out of there. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I better get back up here. <laughs> but you have a decision to make. That if I'm going to live by this or just think it's a fun little thing to go to church and, uh, you know, a good life is good, but he came to give me life and give it to me more abundantly. And I'm going to live an abundant life. Amen. Amen. I, the apostle Paul, he came, he came to that conclusion. So, so what are you going to do? Kill me? I mean, if I die, I just go to heaven and that's fine with me. Or it might be better for me to stay here. And so he made his own choice when they were about to ex execute him. Philippians chapter 1, he said, you know, for me, 21, he goes, for me to live is Christ, but to die, that's gain. I mean, if I die, that's okay. But uh, if not, I think it's better if I stay. Because if I stay, I can help you. And so he made a choice to stay. And you know what? They couldn't kill him until he decided it was time to go. 
Yeah, it's time to go. Timothy back there again. He says, okay, I finished the course, finished my faith, ran my course. I've kept the faith. It's time to go. Then the apostle Paul said, yep, I'll lay it down. But he stayed as long as he wanted to. Me too. I'm going to stay as long as I want to. And I'll say it because it's on tape. It's recording this. (laughs) Me and Moses are going to be good friends. (laughs) The man lived... The scripture says the days of man are 120 years. Moses lived to be 120 years. His ear was not dull. His eye was not dim. And his strength was not weak. So as far as I'm concerned, at 120 years old, my ear is not dull. My eye is not dim. And my strength will not be weak. Someone out there goes, I don't believe that. I know. (laughs) That's fine. You don't believe it. I do. These things happen to those who believe. Uh, I don't know about that. Well, if I get to be 110, it's a whole lot more than you'll get. <laughs> I don't know, shoot for the moon, shoot for the stars. Man, get way out there because, man, you just get halfway. You're farther than anybody else. Go for it. Amen? Amen. I didn't check anything here. All right. Two points. Choose life. Choose the word way. Choose God's way. The blessing, not the curse. Blessed, empowered to prosper. The curse, empowered to fail. (laughs) I don't want to empower to fail. I want blessing, amen? I want life. And the second one is, is if you haven't made Jesus Lord of your life and experienced eternal life. Man, make a choice today. You don't have to put it off. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, born again, changed, receive the gift of eternal life, all those terms we use. But God wants you part of his family. He's yearning to give you and let you experience eternal life. We, that's, that's the best term we can use in our English vocabulary, eternal life. But it's that divine nature. It's the what God is, is, and comes upon his people. So make that choice today. Choose life. Lord, we thank you for your word today. And I thank you for the spirit that has revealed things to us and to our hearts. And we do make a decision. As Lord of our lives, we decide to go the word way to go your way, the right way. And we decide to resist all temptations, situations, and evil that would come against us and fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on this eternal life. Thank you, Father, for these great and exceeding great and precious promises that we are partakers of your divine nature. And Father, if anyone is here today and they've not yet experienced you, they've heard about you and they know you and they know the story, and, but they've never experienced you in their heart. I just pray right now that as they make a decision to make Jesus Lord and Savior and allow this eternal life to be a part of their new life. If you're here today and you're ready to do that, I want to ask you to just pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I receive the gift of eternal life. I ask you to come in and forgive me of my sins, and I make a choice today to make you the Lord and master of my life, and I make a decision to follow you. And Father, thank you for making me a new person and giving to me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.